Hello, everyone. Thanks for sticking around. I am Sergeant Mug. I'm your host for the next couple runs. And uh, we're going to get started right away with Evergate, run by Sunny Muffin. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Sunny Muffin. And uh, yeah, we're going to be doing some Evergate Any Percent today. Um, before we get started, I do have a couple donations to read off. We have $20 from Couch23. Thank you so much. And we have a $10 from Shala Kitty who says just gonna snag myself a soul color real quick here and um she contributed ten dollars towards choosing purple for the soul flame color all right are we good to go I'm ready when you are all right uh so we'll go ahead and count it down gonna go ahead and get started in three two one go all right so this is Evergate um, it is a puzzle platformer by Stone Lantern Games. Um, the game came out on Nintendo Switch uh, a couple months back, and then the PC version followed shortly after. Um, it did kind of have a pretty extensive um, closed beta phase where a lot of the strats were polished. So um, the speed run is definitely more polished than a game you would think for a game that came out two months ago, which is pretty cool. So I am currently playing on the Steam release. There really is no like actual differences between the two versions. Um, the Steam release just runs better. Um, there are some places that the Switch version drops below the 60 FPS, which does slow down your gameplay, and we want to go fast. Um, the Switch version also does have the Soul Flame color option, where you can pick your color of the Soul Flame. So it allowed for that donation incentive to happen. So that's why we're playing on that version. It's pretty cool. So this is Evergate. We are controlling our little spirit here named Key. Key is a spirit that is um, kind of moving through the afterlife. And we're going to be visiting some of Key's memories that happened in life. And we'll be um, fixing some of the some of the problems that Key had when, uh, when he was alive. So this is the Soul Flame. You're going to see this happen all of the time um, in this run. It is the game's unique mechanic. So this like little beam of energy that is coming out of Key, it will connect with Source. So basically, anytime you see white on the walls like this right here, this is Source. Um, so for me to do anything real with the Soul Flame, I have to connect it to Source. In addition, we are going to have some like boxes and things like that. Those are also interactable and will be used to break these crystals. So this is the game's tutorial section. We are just learning how to break crystals using the soul flame. So these are our kind of demonstration crystals right here. We have four of them and I am using the right stick to interact with those and break those crystals. This is going to be the main mechanic of the game. Um, each world that we go to is going to show a new different type of crystal and all of them interact just a little bit differently. So that's the game's tutorial section. Um, the game is kind of structured with with uh, 11 different worlds that we are going to be exploring. And I think there's like 76 different levels. Um, there's 77 when you're like actually browsing through it, but one of them is a cutscene level. We also have one boss fight, so we're going to be just kind of diving right into it. Um, this is the library. This is where it's kind of the hub for all of the various levels. We're going to be just kind of exploring throughout here and kind of getting some story sections, which are uh, fun when you're going through the game. But when you're speed running, it's just you got you to gotta mash through them. Um, so this is the Evergate, and this is what where these memories are going to be occurring. So we're going to be stepping right into Key's first set of memories, which is the Secret Garden. Now, this game did come out with a patch like yesterday that changed this level, so apologies if it is uh, a little little rusty for me. But uh, you can see that we're using the Soul Flame to break these crystals. Um, these are boost crystals, so anytime I hit one, I'm going to be gaining some just some speed in whatever direction that I'm going. Um, the ones that are horizontal, we're gonna, like if I'm aiming horizontally, I'm gonna be gain gaining horizontal momentum. If I'm like above them, I'm gonna be gaining vertical momentum. So these are really useful because a lot of these levels are very horizontal. So the more horizontal I can get in relation to the crystal, the more momentum I can get. So we have seven levels within Secret Garden here, and we're going to be just kind of going through them pretty quickly. Um, this is, again, the game's first world. It's nothing really too special. Um, we do unlock the game's first artifact here, and this is a change because the patch yesterday made it so these artifacts unlock a little bit faster. 
and this one gives us more boost power. So you see, I am now flying really far, really fast whenever I hit one of these boost crystals. Um, we do have a little skip right there in one four, and that one has been made easier by the patch, which is something that is very, very welcomed. Uh, moving into one five, this is actually one of the trickier levels to do quickly because you got to skip the intended path and go up the left side of the map right there. 1-6, uh, we are introduced to the flowers. These flowers break when I hit them with the boost crystal. Um, you, gotta, you have to actually hit them to break them, but uh, that's okay. Um, one of the things that I do enjoy about this game is mistakes aren't like terribly punishing. Uh, you restart very quickly, much in like the lines of like Celeste or Super Meat Boy. Um, the developers definitely took some inspiration from those games to make it so their, their deaths aren't that punishing. And that is all of Secret Garden. So. Um, in between each of the all the various worlds in this game, we have some downtime where we go back to the library, learn some more story bits. Um, so if you have anything you'd like to plug real quick, go for it. Um, I just think this game is so satisfying to watch. <laughs> um, no donations yet, but just a friendly reminder that if you're having a fun time watching Ragnarok and would love to hang out with the Valkyries more often, um, you can join the RPG Valkyries Discord. Just type exclamation point Discord into the chat for a link to join. All right, so we are into the dark woods. Uh, have to do a real quick, quick glitch right there. I guess it's not really a glitch, but uh, um, we are introduced to the Earth Crystals in this chapter, which are these like little square pink brown boxes. Um, when you connect those with source, you create a platform directly under key. Now, every time I do this, it refreshes key's jump. So if I do it in a correct way, I can gain additional height that I shouldn't be able to get. Um, this is the first level I do on keyboard. Um, so throughout the game, I'm going to be playing on both controller and keyboard mouse. Um, each control scheme has its advantages and disadvantages. Um, on the controller, I am able to make off-screen shots much easier. Because the keyboard mouse, you use the pointer to direct where your soul flame is going to go. Um, on controller, you also have what is known as aim assist, which um, it helps you kind of break the crystals um, because you're using one of the joysticks to aim, so you don't have the precision that you would have with a keyboard and a mouse. Um, but it aims for the center of crystals. So sometimes shots that are more precise, I'll be doing a keyboard mouse because the auto aim doesn't really quite know what to do. Um, and it by far it is by far from is far from perfect because the auto aim, if there are like two crystals that are very close to each other, it prefers the one that is closest to where I'm aiming. And sometimes if you're aiming on a 360 degree thumbstick, it gets a little bit difficult. So this is the final level of Darkwoods. Um, we've been seeing these crows. This is the, the only level where the crows are actually a problem, but uh, with some good platforming right there, we're able to make it up to the gate and finish off that level with not too much issue. And back to the library. Now, how long did it take you to complete like a casual playthrough of this game? Um, this game, when I first got it on Switch, it took me probably seven, eight hours. Um, and that was not 100%ing the game. Um, it was just kind of finishing the puzzles as quickly as possible. There are different categories for this game. Um, so 100%, you have to get all of the little flower petals, which are kind of hard to see. They're like translucent. Um, so you have to collect all those, you have to break all of the crystals, and you have to get it under the speed run time. So if you look on the right hand side, you see the flower petal counter, the crystal counter, and then the speed run time. Um, so the 100% run is roughly 45, 50 minutes right now. Um, so it's not too much longer, but some of the strategies for it are quite different because you actually have to do some of the levels a little bit more intended. Um, so here we have, oops, um, here we have the fire crystals. So those red crystals that are on fire, um, yeah, those, those indicate fire. Those burn source. Um, as you see here, I need them to burn that source so I can actually get to the gate. Um, they will also be used in conjunction with a couple of different things later on in the run, um, and they can be you can combine crystals in this game as well. Um, so this is one of the strats that uh, was found by Breakdown, and it's really, really hard, and so I'll give it a couple tries. Um, but basically, I need to get a double jump off of that stone crystal right there, and then hit this off-screen shot to get all the way to the gate without using the dragons. Um, these dragons are really slow, they take forever, and that's the intended path to the level. We don't like intended things here, we like speed, so kind of go nice and fast. You can see here, I do have to wait on this dragon, and I did not get enough height off that crystal. Um, but this is skipping the entire first half of this level. 
and using these earth crystals to get up and over this uh I don't even know what to call it. It's like a little house that moves out of your way when you ignite it. Um, but we'll see. We'll see some more of those here. We got more of these houses we got to ignite. Um, switching back to keyboard and mouse because I have to make a pretty precise shot to ignite the source down there. And that skips a whole lot of that level as well. Um, we do unlock the firecracker tail now a little bit earlier than we used to, which is cool. Um, the firecracker tail is the artifact that's used for the majority of the run. Um, it increases your base movement speed by 25%. So. Naturally, we want to go fast. Um, it's quick. There's also other routes of this uh, game that do use the Dragon Head artifact, which is the fastest form of movement. But in order to get it, you have to 100% this world. And 100%ing this world takes a good amount of time. Um, both of the routes are like pretty close to pretty close to um, the same amount of time. Um, it's just kind of depends on which one you're more comfortable with. The Dragon Head is like it's harder to use. And you do see it a lot in 100%, because 100% you actually have to unlock everything. So since you have the dragon head, you might as well use it. Um, this one, we don't really want, there's not, it's not really worth it to go out of your way to unlock it. Um, so we just kind of stick with the lower, lower move speed artifact, but it's still, it's pretty good for our purposes. All right, moving right into the blizzard. This is the fastest book in the game. Um, so these seven levels go by very quickly, uh, mostly due to the swap crystal. So you see these little hourglasses, um, these are swap crystals. Um, anytime I hit one, it's going to swap me w to wherever the source that I connect it with is. Um, sometimes that's boxes, sometimes that's going to be other various things. Um, so we're going to be using these swap crystals to go very, very quick. Um, the devs actually just added in this patch some spikes here. Um, kind of mean of them. They messed up some of the speed strats, made that level a little bit harder. But we do use some nice off-screen hits here to go pretty quickly through these levels. Um, yeah, uh, the swap crystals are pretty broken. Um, we're able to skip pretty much entire levels with them. So like you'll see here, if I hit the swap crystal properly, we go right to the top of the level and skip the entire thing. It's very nice. So um, this, I'm going to be using keyboard and mouse for the next couple levels because I have to do some pretty precise hits here. Um, so that one I have to aim on the top right of the box or I don't get the correct angle to bounce through those platforms. Uh, the next level coming up, you can skip the entire level with the swap crystal. We also have the blizzard mechanic that's going on um, that has like things falling from the sky. So we want to try to dodge that. And this is a very precise shot, but like you see, that swap crystal just swaps me up to the top and then I'm completely done with the level. Um, here, this is like the most dangerous level for Blizzard, but uh, yeah, we don't even get to see it. We just jump right up to the top. Nice and easy. So, Blizzard done. Uh, that's probably actually one of the more technical worlds as well. It's pretty difficult to do quickly. Um, a lot of the strategies are pretty precise. So um, top like any percent runners really, really work on consistency when you're looking at that, those levels, um, because if you mess one up, you're losing just a couple of seconds every single time, which uh, it, you can't really do in a game this short. You want to you wanna get all the time save you can get. All right, so moving on to Summer Hunt. Summer Hunt has these missiles. Um, so these missiles like can break terrain. They're going to be used later on to uh, hit some caribou, unfortunately, but the caribou are in our way and we need them to unlock our level. So we use the little missiles to uh, kind of open up some paths for us. Um, this level we do have... Yeah. This level we also, you see more of these icicles that are coming down from the sky. Um, yeah, they, you just have to dodge them. They are in the same cycle the first time you go through a level and then every subsequent time. So I have to memorize two different cycles for all of these ice falling levels just to make sure that I can go through them as quickly as I can. Um, this is one of the, oh, one more level. Um, so this is the first level we see the caribou. Um, this caribou is blocking the end of this level. So we got to make sure we hit him with a missile. And then you see the rocks that are out, the rocks that are in the way of the gate, then kind of disappear and we can go ahead and finish it. This is the probably one of the harder levels in the speed run. Um, got to do some pretty precise jumps right at the start. And then unfortunately on controller, this is really, really hard because, oh, and I missed the first one. Um, you have to hit two different caribou, and I have to use this swap crystal in conjunction with the missile crystal on the right-hand side there. 
and that will swap me to the missiles position and then i have to use that to hit the caribou and then hit the top caribou after the missile flies through the fire um, it's really it's a difficult strategy to do on controller specifically because you have a lot of things that are in a line and sometimes controller just likes to hit the uh hit the first thing available um, this one we're combining missiles with fire to break ice uh, because missile plus fire equals burn ice, so that's a lot of fun. We're done with that one. Um, I'm back on keyboard mouse for the rest of this because we have a lot of those shots that need to be hit like in sequence. So, like I have to hit those two crystals. I have to hit those two crystals at the same time, or the strategy doesn't work. Um, so using keyboard mouse, it's a lot easier to do that. Whereas on controller, it might prefer hitting that first crystal and then going directly to the source around the second crystal. And last level of this world, we gotta hit the caribou. And we're supposed to use that boost crystal, but sometimes things don't always go as planned. So we'll just uh, restart it and go again. And that's the end of Summer Hunt. Feel free to plug anything you might wanna plug or anything. Sure. You want. Um run up coming up after this is Nubo, and we do have a donation goal for the game to include the bonus. Oshieti Nubo run. I sure hope I didn't totally mess up that name. Um, we are at 96 of $350. So if you want to see the bonus run, get those donations in. All right. We are on to Northern Lights. This is probably the hardest chapter, at least in my opinion. Um, we have some very difficult shots that we got to make in this in this world um like that first one right there is deceptively hard to do you have to like aim completely straight up or you just whiff that shot and fall to your death in the spikes um and now we're combining some more of the mechanics so we got to use the fire right there to burn some source and then we go around top um this this world introduces the void crystals so these like purple orby thingies are made by void crystals and we can swim through them um if you think like celeste like the feather mechanic it's pretty similar to that where you are steering your way through space um, you have full three directional movement um, unfortunately on keyboard these are like way harder because you only have four directions or eight directions you can go uh gotta get through these spikes okay now we are in there um, so we're also unlocking just a bunch of different artifacts as we go through most of them are pretty useless we just like the speed that the firecracker tail provides um, gotta switch back to keyboard here because I have to line up that shot. If you miss that shot, you lose like five seconds and you're sad. So never want to be sad. Always want to be happy. Finishing off that level pretty quickly. Um, this next one is a very vertical level, which is cool. You get to see some of the game's vertical options here. So using some boost crystals, some void crystals, just to kind of climb up this level. And I missed it. Okay, you can actually get on top of that um, ice platform right there, skipping, going down, and through the void through the void zone right there. But uh, it's not that big of a deal if you miss it. We have the first uh, skip coming up right here. You can actually hop on some like micro ledges. I guess would probably be the term for them, where it's the developers didn't really intend for you to go over that uh, that platform that way. But you can get on that micro ledge and use just that like little like pixel that you land on in order to complete the level in an unintended fashion um, this is the hardest strat in the run we gotta go over these spikes to the left use our slowdown mode get the void over the spikes and go over the left hand side of the level um, i made that look easy but it's not i promise you it's it's pretty hard <laughs> i believe I wish I, would, <laughs> I wish i would get that first try in runs but yeah that's northern lights What's the lore like in this game? <laughs> it's good. Uh, so Key is moving through the afterlife um, and he is revisiting places that he's been in his life and kind of like going back through his life and figuring out the, the wrongs that he did and how to right them. Um, so currently this is like the schoolyard chapter um, where Key is kind of going back through some of his memories of of school and you live out the lore um in these like mini cutscenes that we are skipping all of because this is a speed run um but you'll see them like pop up at the end of levels and like so you'll notice the music changes very dramatically throughout this game and most of those are tied to the story um so here we get fierce flame that is our ability for the schoolyard world um, and we get to use this uh, fire to just kind of guide ourselves. Again, kind of like the Celeste Feather. You pick it up and you're able to move all directions. 
Um, it's kind of a pain, but uh, it, it's fun. Um, this is like a controller only strategy. You have to hit an off screen crystal and fly through the middle section of that level. There's a lot of glass and shards and happy, fun stuff that wants to kill you. So we, we do our best at avoiding that. Um, this is probably my most frustrating level casually. You have to use this ball to break this glass, which uh, is pretty hard. You have to do it. Um, I do this one on keyboard mouse because it's like really, really hard to aim exactly where you want to hit the ball. It's like playing playing pool or playing billiards. Um, so using keyboard mouse, you're, you have a little bit of greater precision on that one. Uh, we're back to controller on this one. We are doing a unintended strategy that you get over to this glass right here, use an angle that you weren't supposed to get to break the glass at the end of the level and finish it fairly quickly. And this level, we just skip the entire thing, doing an off-screen shot to a fierce flame, going around the left-hand side of the level, and we're done. All right, so we are we're getting our way through a lot of these levels, and this is where the game's kind of like protagonist will be showing up. So this is Ha, this is Key's brother, um, and it is kind of an evil version of Key, and we'll be kind of screwing things up in some of the upcoming levels. Uh, this is Falling Sky. This is going to introduce us to the air raid mechanic, where we have a bunch of debris falling from the sky. Sometimes that air raid, air raid is good, and sometimes that air raid is bad. Um, so in order to... I'll kind of be pointing out where it's good and where it's bad. Sometimes you have to trigger it to open up the end of the level. So, for example, on this upcoming level, you're going to see there's a bunch of rocks around the end gate. We have to trigger an air raid to break those and finish the level. Uh, this is actually going to be a little bit hard. I wasn't supposed to use both those crystals. That's okay. Um, I did switch back to the lucky frog here because the frog actually affects these pole crystals, which are the ones that um, have just been introduced in this level. These little, like, uh, I don't know how to describe them, little like, fan blades. Um, they will pull you to the source. And with the lucky frog, I get pulled 20% more, which is nice and fast. So we like, like the lucky frog in this chapter. It's one of the only artifact swaps that we make in the run, um, just because we are doing a lot of vertical, um, a lot of horizontal movement, sorry. And there's really not a lot in the game that you can do to speed up your horizontal movement, other than like the boost crystals and the pull crystals. So any way that we can speed it up, we are going to take and finish these levels as quickly as we can. You can kind of see there, we had some debris falling from that one. Um, that level you just have to kind of dodge it, but we go really fast and uh, it really doesn't start falling quick enough to impact the speed run. Um, so you see here I'm triggering another air raid. We've got to kind of go to this little safe spot underneath the gate, um, trigger the air raid, and then fly back over to the gate using the swap crystal and a whole bunch of pull crystals. Same thing here, we got to use the like destructible platforms that are above here. Um, all of these get broken once the air raid comes down, so you have like one layer of protection and you use that and you can go straight to the gate. Last level. Um, this one's actually one of the strategies that I'm really bad at. Uh, you have to hit both of these in sequence. Um, when you combine crystals, it like doubles their power. So by using both of the pull crystals right there, I gain a bunch of speed that I'm not supposed to have and launch myself all the way to the left-hand side of the level, trigger the air raid, come back. And that is it for Falling Sky. Um, yeah, these levels go by really, really quick when you're fast at them. So uh, that's one of my favorite things about this game is like picking up this speed run. It really isn't too bad because all of like the run segments are in very, very small chunks. So you go out there, you learn your 76 aisles and you uh, you just practice those. Um, a lot of the time is kind of eaten by the uh, story sequences and the cutscenes, but in the speed run, you don't have to worry about that because all you're doing is smashing through them. All right, we are on to, I don't even remember the, the title of this uh, of this world, uh, Neon Alley, yeah. How could I forget? It's so neon. Uh, we'll switch back to our, our uh, firecracker tail right here. Uh, this mechanic is the spring. The spring refreshes your jump. So we now have double and triple and quadruple jumps depending on how many springs that we collect throughout the level. 
In addition, we are also going to have the EMP grids, uh, which are popping up right here. When an EMP grid, when you're in an EMP grid, you don't gain soul flame. Um, you can't use your soul flame. So I have to be avoiding these EMP grids, which is actually really hard on this level um, because I'm not able to connect with any crystals there and I just can't progress. So you're, you'll see me doing some pretty precise jumps to kind of work around these various EMP grids. There are these like little blue swirly things right here. Um, this level has some pretty precise shots where I have to hit those exactly and you can go through the middle. Um, a lot of these strats are pretty unintended, but I really like that the devs just kind of left them in. Um, it's cool for speedrunning, and then 100% does a lot more of the intended strategies for these levels. Uh, you can make that shot, that's a pretty precise shot, and then I screwed the second half of the level. It's all good. Um, using this swap crystal to swap the block right there, and then I'm trying to hit this spring right here and get over to the top of the level. Um, Neon Alley, I think, is probably the hardest world for me to be consistent at. There's just a lot of really, really difficult shots that you have to make. Um, like right here, I'm hitting these from the other side of the level, and I screwed it up. But yeah, so you have to be able to hit these at like a weird angle. The bottom one in particular is like really difficult because you see there's like a gap in the source right there, and it just it loves to troll you. Anytime you try to hit that crystal, it just trolls you. Um, so here, we're going to go through the middle of this level. Um, I have to do some pretty precise shots to hit these various uh, boost crystals right here, or jump crystals, to regain my jump and climb up through the middle. That level, you're actually supposed to disable the EMP grid. Um, turns out you can do that, but it's slow, and uh, we don't like doing things that are slow in speedruns. Um, so right here, I have to use this drone. So we got some drones in this game. They're flying around. Uh, the drone will break that platform for me, and I can just kind of fall under it. One mechanic that I really didn't describe was your jump. Um, if you run off the side of a platform or you use like a crystal, you don't lose your jump. So you can gain effectively what is a double jump if you like swap with the crystal or do something like that, and then you can maintain your jump. Um, you could also do that by doing uh, corner clip boosts, which uh, are, are pretty crazy. They're used in the low percent run. I saw Ashi in chat. Uh, she can she can tell you all about those low percent runs. Uh, they're, they're a lot of fun. You can do a lot of these levels without collecting a single crystal. It's pretty cool. Um, so this is our crow fight. This is the boss fight. Uh, we cheese it. We cheese it really bad. Um, so this boss, <laughs> you're supposed to like use all these crystals to get to an angle where you can shoot the uh, the missile into his face. But uh, we have an artifact that makes it so our, our arrow crystals lock on. And I can hit them at pretty much any angle and they'll shoot right into the crow's face. We have it hidden three times. And we're done with the boss fight. Yeah. Pretty, pretty climactic right there. Make that yeah. look easy. <laughs> yeah, um, so we, there are all other categories of this game that actually have to do that boss fight. Um, there are restricted categories that you don't get to use any artifacts, so if that kind of thing interests you where you don't just cheese the game in every way possible, um, you can run that in Evergate. Um, we do have a couple people that are working on that run. It's pretty cool. It's a lot of fun as well. You can't do a lot of the super fast strategies and have to do things a little bit more intended. All right, we are onto the Underlands. So unlike all the other ones, we are not introducing a new crystal in the Underlands. What we are getting are these wild crystals. So right here, you can see that the crystals are nothing until I hit the source that is on one of these blocks. So I'm going to be like hitting the pool crystal source on this one. It's going to turn all of the crystals on the map into pool crystals. And I'm going to use those to finish the level. Um, there are levels coming up that there's a lot of different um, options available and it makes the speed run pretty quick so right here i'm hitting an off-screen swap crystal and going right to the end of the level that level is really fun on 100 percent let me tell you um, here we're going to be doing some more off-screen shenanigans if i did it right okay um, sometimes you're contending with the camera like on this level in particular when you first load in you don't have the camera angle that you want and it's kind of kind of oof but that's okay we'll just reset the level get the camera angle that we want um, that's kind of one of the big disadvantages of using keyboard and mouse is uh you can't hit things that are off screen because you have to be able to aim at them um so we're going to be using controller on some of those levels um, this one we're getting introduced to these fire circles that are like constantly expanding um i screwed that up yeah, that's okay. Um, but these fire circles, they eventually will cover large portions of the screen and uh, they'll wreck your day. 
this is one of the harder strats in the run. We got to use these crystals to the left hand side, um, turn them on. We hit the, we jump, hit the jump crystal, and then it, use the three boost crystals or three pull crystals on the left hand side to completely skip the level. Um, it's pretty hard. You got to be able to move fairly fast. I don't even know how people do that on keyboard and mouse. Um, you got to have pretty quick reactions, basically like Osu style. It's it's pretty fun. All right, so we got a little bit of a cutscene here before we move into the final world. So anything you might want to plug, go for it. Absolutely. Um, just a friendly reminder that any donations, including towards our Nubo goal incentive, um, any buying any of our awesome merch or uh, even bits and subs here on Twitch, I'll go towards Take This, the awesome charity we're supporting in the marathon. All right, so we are in the storm. Um, this is like kind of a half world. It, it's pretty strange, um, but it's it's kind of more story driven than anything. So here we have Key, who is kind of struggling with his inner spirit Ha, and we're going to be using Ha to go through these memories. And these memories are just kind of messed up. They, there's a lot of weird things that are happening. A lot of mechanics are being combined from the game. Um, so we get to see basically everything that we saw in the game but crammed into three levels. Um, so here we're going to be doing a pretty precise shot on this missile right there to go an un unintended way in this level. You're supposed to go like all the way to the right hand side, do a bunch of breaking of these crystals. That's too slow. We'll just uh, break it in an unintended way and uh, go through basically the entire level. Um, the strategy on this level is controller only because you have to fly off screen and it turns out when you are aiming fierce flame on keyboard and mouse you can only go where your mouse goes and if you try to do this you go outside of the plane of the game and it doesn't work but you can use that fierce flame to kind of jump on top of the entire level this skips a long auto scroll to resection where you have to kind of follow a block throughout like this wavy thing um yeah we don't use any of the wind mechanics in this run because they're slow they all get skipped so unfortunately we don't get to see our uh, happy helper blocks flying through the wind oh oops okay um so this strategy you have to hit this uh dragon while it's flying up through the little ice hole using the swap crystal um for some reason i am struggling with it that's okay though we get to see more of this level hooray um, but yeah, I want to aim really high on this dragon. If you aim too low, your jump doesn't get you high enough to get back on top of the level. But yeah, that one, casually, that level like took me, I don't know, probably 15-20 minutes. It's a, it's a head scratcher. And a lot of these puzzles, especially when you're trying to 100% them, they, uh, they get pretty difficult. But we're on to the last two levels, and we get a new mechanic. Hooray! Um, so the mechanic here is we're going to get these crystals, and they're going to become part of key. So our first crystal we're going to get is this boost crystal right here. And now every time I hit the source, I'm going to get a boost. Um, so you're going to see me spamming quite quickly, hopefully, and not dying. That's OK. Um, but we have to use these boost crystals to kind of fly through this maze of spikes. Um, and I'm gonna try to skip here. Got it. Okay, cool. You can skip that the second half of that section by slipping through the fire right there. Um, and now I have the void crystal. Um, so I'm gonna be able to create void zones here. This is the one. This is one of the places on Switch that the console just kind of cries. So uh, I'm just spamming void zones right here, which is like taking a ton of computer power. Um, normally I'm at like 400 FPS. That's the only time I drop to like 120. Um, but now we have the jump crystals, so we have basically unlimited double jumps, um, and we're going to use those to go throughout this maze. Um, this is the third of four sections of this like little escape section. Um, but yeah, we're we're making our way through it just fine. No big no big kerfuffles other than that first one. Kerfuffle. <laughs> I think it's crazy that you're switching between keyboard and mouse and controller. Yeah, that's uh, it's just the nature of the game. Uh, a lot of the strategies are only doable on controller, and a lot of the strategies are much easier on keyboard and mouse. Um, so you kind of have to learn how to play on both if you want to do the game at a top level. Um, I know that the, the any percent record holder, he only plays on controller for, I believe, one level. Um, he does everything else on keyboard and mouse. Um, so he's kind of a beast and super good at the game. 
Um, but then like other runners, I use primarily controller. It's just more comfortable for me when I'm sitting there grinding out ILs for a couple hours. Uh, keyboard mouse is not super conducive to that. But yeah, and that's basically the end of the game. Um, we have to go through a whole bunch of cutscene stuff right now. So if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to type them in chat. If you want to plug anything, go for it. Sure. And when is time? It's after like two minutes. We got we got some time. <laughs> well, um, just a bit more about Take This, um, which you can read for yourself at takethis.org. Um, their motto is HERE, H-E-R-E, -E, which stands for Hope is Healing. Each person is unique. Respect your journey and every accomplishment is a victory. All right. So we are connecting Key with Ha right here. Um, just kind of finishing out a lot of the story bits. Um, so I'll go ahead and do my my plugs. Uh, if you are interested in speedrunning Evergate, um, there is a Discord. If you go to speedrun.com slash Evergate, you can click on the Discord link and be linked to the community Discord. Um, a lot of really, really cool people there, a lot of nice runners. Um, I think the community is probably one of the best speedrun communities that I've ever been a part of, so love you all. You're all amazing. Um, if you're interested in picking up this game, I highly recommend it. The devs are like absolutely amazing. Um, the other runners are absolutely amazing. A lot of beautiful people out there. Um, absolutely suggested. This game is pretty quick, like you see here, any percent. 35 minutes and that wasn't that run wasn't super great that's okay uh looking more for the entertainment value out of that one but uh, 100 percent clocks in right under 50 minutes so a very accessible game to run i know personally a lot of things going on in life don't have a ton of time so sitting down doing a speed run of evergate it's pretty quick it's nice but yeah we're just finishing out the final cutscene sections time will be when this fades to black and naturally, gotta go overestimate, not by a ton, but we're almost there. I'd say you, you hit it pretty close to on the nose with the estimate. Well, thank you. And yeah, thanks. Uh, so time is on fade to black, so time. But yeah, thanks for having me, at Speedrun Ragnarok. I know that I'm. I was really excited to run this game. It's awesome. I hope. You guys want to come run this game now. It's so cool. Uh, but yeah, and I hope that we raise a lot of money for Take This. Absolutely. Thanks for showing off that awesome game. And thanks, everyone, for hanging out and seeing it with me for the first time. So... Uh, next up is Nubo, and we still have a bit of time to get your donations in for the bonus Nubo run. So go ahead. We are still at 96 out of $350. So go ahead and send in your donations that support Take This so we can see that bonus run. Um, and uh, thanks again for being with us, Sunny Muffin. We're going to go ahead and, and uh, start getting ready for the next run. Yeah, thanks for having me.